What is up, everybody? My name is Richard Terrell, otherwise known as Kirby Kid, and you are watching the Mario Maker Workshop Crash Course panel for EGX Digital 2020. The Mario Maker Workshop is a, it was like a 23-week course in which we studied level design and also a little bit of game production uh, as a community. This workshop was entirely online, and we operated mostly out of Discord and Google Sheets. Um, the website's here, if you guys ever wanted to know. Uh, we were an online game school that operated like a community. We used Mario Maker 2 as our platform to rapidly test and share levels. So everything that we did was a matter of playing the game, making levels, uh, sharing them on our Discord, and giving each other feedback. Uh, and yeah, we opened the workshop to everybody. So we ran a small campaign, got a little help with the Twitter uh, boosting, and we got a small crew of people that actually wanted to learn about Mario and most of them were dedicated for the long call. So we've talked about Mario in the past. There's been many YouTube videos, both on the old channel and the new, breaking down Mario Maker levels, talking about level design and extracting principles and all that. But essentially, this is the effort from all of us to create a single experience that brings it all together and packages it up in a 23-week-long course. So you guys sitting in the audience, <laughs> obviously, you guys don't have nearly as much time as we did. This is going to be about a 30 minute to an hour long video, and hopefully we're going to deliver something compact and meaningful that you can even participate yourself uh, when learning. So so everything in our workshop is broken down into lessons, and the very first lesson that we undertook as a community, as a workshop, uh, as a group of Mario makers was what I call the basic layout. So what is Mario's jump without something to jump off of or a platform to jump to? Uh, for Mario, all level design starts with basic layout. The course's basic layout largely consists of the formations and the terrain and the blocks and all those basic chunky structures. These structures define the space that Mario can safely maneuver through. So before we think about coins and enemies and power-ups and secrets and anything else, we really got to figure out where Mario is going to be and what the space looks like. And here's a really cool quote by Shigeru Miyamoto. He said, Early on, we understood that the ability to make the character jump in and of itself was something that was fun. That was kind of the first discovery in finding the fun and giving you that sense of physical activity, uh, in particular jumping from one place to another and kind of connecting those jumps. So <laughs> that was something that we had to discover for ourselves. So for all you people out there, grab your Switch, boot up Mario Maker 2, and assignment number one, blocks only. No items. Grab your Switch, and the, and the challenge is you pick a level, pick it in any style you want except for that 3D Mario style. We're going to stick to the 2D, straight 2D ones, right? And you're going to use Small Mario from the start. You're only going to place these bricks, these breakable blocks. You're called blocks, okay? So you're going to place these blocks in the level and make sure that there's no way for Mario to die. No pits. That's really all there is. Like, don't put any pits in. And just make sure that Mario can get from the beginning of the level to the end. Uh, go ahead and work on that as we continue through this talk, and we'll evaluate uh, our progress in a bit. So while you're doing that, I want to introduce our guests with us today on this panel. We have a few members from the Mario Maker Workshop here to join us and reflect on all the fun that we had uh, going through these lessons and learning together, and even to play some of our levels for you on stream so you can get a sense and an idea of what we're <laughs> talking about. So with me today on this panel, I have a few members from the actual Mario Maker Workshop. Now, these are some of the people that have spent roughly 23 weeks straight studying level design with us, building levels, giving us feedback, and really running the whole race. So in this small crash course in which we're going to give you like five of some of our most basic, most key lessons, these people are going to show you some of the lessons that we went through, some of the levels that they made, and demonstrate them on stream with some of these really interesting stream setups we got here. I actually pointed in the right direction. I'm so proud of myself. There we go. Okay. So in terms of blocks only, if there's anything you guys want to say, go ahead and, and let us know now. Maybe somebody just recently experienced this uh, exercise and learned a whole bunch. Maybe. The, maybe. I don't know. Okay. So when the Mario Maker workshop was first going on, um, my husband was actually going through it, and he showed me his blocks only level, and he was so proud of himself. And I was like, <laughs> oh, interesting um <laughs> I know he's about level design i actually went to the mario maker uh, workshop a lot later uh, a couple weeks ago so almost a year after it ended um after it first started and 
Um, I went through it because I'm learning about level design, and I saw Richard's stream from the first blocks only level that he originally put up, and I was like, "That's really interesting." You just Richard talks a lot about like what makes Mario fun and what's fun for Mario to do, and I always enjoy the three the three jumps Mario does. So the actually, tri triple jump, yeah, right? yeah. So I tried to do a um, a blocks only level with that, and it was really fun and a lot harder than it sounds, <laughs> and a lot more fun than it sounds too. So uh, I really cool. enjoyed it to design levels from my own games i'm used to first coming up with a whole bunch of different elements and I'm like okay how do i how do i put all these together into something which is difficult mm -hmm. because it's just like that's a lot to work with and a lot to try to come up with but when you pair it back to okay all you can do is just these basic blocks then you have to think okay what how can you make it interesting just to move through this space with that basic layout and so it was a good way to sort of step back and figure out what Mario's movement was, what it could, what you could do with Mario, and what was fun about that, and how you could make interesting setups, and just coming up with lots of different, lots of different kinds of setups, and seeing how much variation there could be without adding anything extra. So yeah, what I really loved about the blocks only exercise is that there was a ton of variety. You think with only one element in a game like Mario, when you're used to having a wheel of just about every single enemy and power up and item you can imagine, uh, how interesting you can make things with just one singular element. But it's that, it's that kind of minimalism, it's that kind of focus, it's that kind of design by subtraction before we even you know start putting extra things in uh, that really makes this exercise something special, right? Uh, so you can see on the, sh the mm -hmm. screen... There's different formations, and from the levels that the workshoppers turned in, some people made pixel art, some people created murals, some people built uh, a theme, like an uh, a obstacle theme of surfaces versus horizontal and different shapes. Uh, some people played around with the negative space, some people mimicked uh, maze-like formations. Like in the bottom right here, you can see Akamarak's level. Uh, I remember this level. And he, mm. he put a maze in the top right. And mm, yep. there's a couple of surprising things that happened from this uh, exercise, too. Speed running these levels was very fun. <laughs> there were some <laughs> levels where I spent hours just refining my approach uh, because there was some individuals out there stealing my records, uh, which is all I'll say about that. <laughs> but there, there was a few levels where even though it just looked like the simplest, just jump over things, slide down a thing, refining your movement to exist, uh, to get something like incredibly precise in the space just was incredibly engaging. I found it very rewarding and challenging. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you'd be surprised. Mario is kind of what they mean when they say design around fun, design around the core slash find the fun first slash what we might call a base. Um, this is why it's so powerful because without doing hardly anything at all, you've got yourself fun. And that's something that a lot of games actually don't quite get to if you think about it. Um, mm -hmm. any, any other comments, Marcus, yeah. anything? I would say uh, Blocks Only was very freeing for me in the sense that I always try to start uh, my level design at a more top level, conceptual level. Um, so when I was my uh, just Blocks level, uh, assignment one, Blocks for Real, uh, I'm looking at it right now, and it's basically a bunch of random formations. And they don't look like typical Mario formations because they're not. But they're still fun to play in. Um, and that's when I kind of realized, like, oh, you don't need to work too hard on block placement, uh, especially without any other elements like enemies or coins or whatever. You don't have to work too hard at block placement for Mario to have fun to move around it because, you know, the base movement of Mario is relatively fun. So that's the main thing I took away from blocks only. Hmm. So now that I want to show them footage of Marcus's level, uh, I'm going to cut to a different camera that I have here. Oh, yeah, keep it, keep that up. Hold on, Mario. I'll focus on you right there. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we, we, we learned later in the workshop that everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. And one of the things I love about the Mario Maker workshop is we all came with a bunch of different strengths, different weaknesses to work on, which made a lot of things uh, a lot more fun and interesting than you might think. Uh, but this level in particular, Marcus is uh, blocks for real, right? He suffers, he suffers from basic layout. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so when we did more collaborative things down the line, Marcus would get somebody else who's really good at basic layout to start him off, and then he would take it from there, and then I might take it from there and do something that I really enjoy. And that combination, right, was really, really fun. Like, 
knowing your weaknesses, knowing your strengths, and knowing that video games have a lot of complexity to them, a lot of different parts, a lot of different things you can be good at, was a, just a base level thing that we learned at the Mario Maker Workshop, how to dig deeper and how to be more precise with what we're thinking and making and talking about. Eh. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this does look like a bunch of random things. <laughs> <laughs> this one looks like a cell phone um, signal strength bar on the left here. I'm going to try to jump to it. Nope. Lag. Uh, can't quite do it on stream. Looking bad. Yeah, this one looks like a cell phone tower bar. Hey, and Jeff, I... go ahead and show mm-hmm. us the uh, the high rec high score screen on that one. Just like what Jeff said, uh, you're surprised to be, one, it's surprised that you get a lot of variety. Two, you very distinct ideas like oh this is a secret area and they're like what about just putting blocks floating in the sky it makes people feel like they've discovered something that they've done something more than ordinary like extraordinary and um and for my purposes i saw that somebody had taken the world record on crystal's level i was like ah let me see if i can get it and then it was one of those classic moments where i tied their score to the triple digit decimal place right so i was like oh no is this the absolute fastest you can get i was like wait a minute no and then, like, refined my technique and did some stuff, and now I have the the six second score or whatever. I'm like, that was so fun, right? This level seems like it's so basic, and there's so many things to do. At least I found it, it was fun. Well done. Uh, so- mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say that the the tuning the tuning at that beginning part is what makes uh is what makes that triple jump a requirement to reach that upper area because you can't. You can't get enough height unless you do a triple jump at just just the right moment. Cool. And just the right place. Cool. Yeah, so let me just go back to the website. Let me start running through uh, things a little faster. The reason why I wanted to take more time on blocks only is because we're trying to give our audience a little bit of time to make their own level so they can kind of experience mm. what, what we loved about this exercise and what we found really interesting So hopefully everyone watching this stream right now, everyone who wanted to participate in the sort of interactive portion of this crash course for the Mario Maker Workshop, you've gone to a level, you set down some bricks, uh, some blocks, you know, you played around a little bit, you hit save, and that's pretty much, uh, I want you to publish it. I want you to send me those codes. I want you to find us. It's not that hard to find us, and I can put information on the screen later. But I want you to share your levels with us because we're about to do some other interesting things, and hopefully you've gotten uh, enough time to get yourself started. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be the longest level ever. Just like you see on stream, just put some blocks in and let's get going. So yeah, there was a ton of variety with the Mario Maker Workshop levels. A lot of different things that we learned, even principles that we started to extract just based on placing blocks, right? Because if you don't place them well at the very beginning, if, if it's like the actual metaphor, if you don't make your foundation good for Mario, then how can anything else be sort of uh, solid after that? So we learned a lot. And what we have a stream, all of our lessons have a stream on our website. We recap the lessons. They're free for you to look at. But on my blocks only level, as you can see here, I put blocks everywhere. I put blocks floating in the sky and I put large tall towers and things to jump off of and tiny little weird things as well. And then I went back and diagrammed all the ways that I like to flow and move around these odd formations because they're not your typical Mario formations, right? Uh, Mario formations are usually blocky. They give you a lot of uh, air space, a lot of what I call head space to jump around in and uh, do some hang time. And mine are definitely different, right? But I at least was able to know that my style is different and that what I like about my style is this kind of thing I call flow motion, which is all these different interesting ways to keep your momentum going to crisscross and have the level uh, naturally have you flow from one point of interest to the other. There we go. All right. So after we did everything uh, with assignment number one, after we've all turned in our levels, after we all took the time to play each other's levels and actually give each other feedback on each other's levels, we moved on to the much-awaited, miraculous, um, much-anticipated lesson, basic layout number two continued. (laughs) So even though we're still talking about basic layout, because, again, it's important to get a good, strong foundation, what I like about this lesson is of what we learned from the first lesson. So in lesson one, we learned that simply maneuvering Mario is fun. Uh, In fact, the basic layout of a course can work well with only a few structural elements. Building courses with blocks only is interesting, but not super fun, right? It's good. It's not, it's not super good. And un- unfortunately, Mario comes with many other elements to add dynamic challenge and options 
and optional points of interest. In other words, we use blocks only to learn how to build a good course on a good foundation. Uh, so to prove that to ourselves, we did assignment number 1.5. Uh, it's not quite two. <laughs> assignment number, the next assignment was what we call blocks only, no items, extra credit. The, the whole thing was we took our level that had just blocks and I said, only adding just coins or just one type of enemy or just one power up or you switch up the styles, right? Nobody did that one, doesn't matter. You switch up the styles and you can compare how different it is to move to the same formation as a different type of Mario or with a, with a super mushroom or, uh, with coins in the space, right? Just adding one more element and how different you can make the experience. And, you know, coins are a big deal. Shigeru Miyamoto says that's when we were thinking about something that anybody would look and go, Hey, I definitely want that. We thought, yep, it's gotta be money. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> money, money, money. Uh, so, like, we, we participated in the workshop, we made our levels, we shared them with Twitter, uh, we all became, like, a, a happy little family of workshoppers that could play each other's levels instantly and, and give feedback, and that's such an important part of building a community, it's a really important part of learning, uh, never to be underestimated, mm -hmm. right? And as you can see here in the, the footage, they're playing through my race through the Golden Desert, uh, again, that's the level that I showed you before, I added a bunch of coins and some power-ups and stuff, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> and it completely changed how the level works and feels. I drew up some maps for you. You can see the players playing it right over here, which I'll switch my own view for. But yeah, uh, I wanted to hear from you guys, workshoppers. What do you think of the, the extended assignment? What did you learn? And what, any memories? One of the things, so for, I think the, I think the first thing I added was Koopas because I'm like, we got a bunch of blocks. That's one way to, change up how how things work is with koopas because then it can then you've got your basic layout but your basic layout can change so with with koopas first of all it's it's then dangerous to move through that same space that was that used to be harmless mm -hmm. um but then you can you can jump on them you can kick them and that can very quickly start changing where you can move and like where your footing is and so just that having that dynamic and you can also use them to, you can grab them, you can throw them at other Koopas. And so there's just a lot of new possibilities that come with such a dynamic enemy added into the game. Yeah, good point. Uh, just one enemy. Uh, we saw a little bit on the website before the, the interplay and stuff, but yeah, Koopas are one of the most complex enemies interplay wise in the entire game. Mm. You can go from wing it to walk it to walk it to shell the shell back to walking or shell the kick to kick that like so many things, right? Gotta love mm -hmm. Koopas. Uh and adding the right enemy. And it, you know, overall it seems that enemies in Mario are so simple, right? Like they don't have a lot of complex AI and they don't move very fast. But again, you start with a good foundation, you pick the right enemy and all of a sudden everything just starts exploding and it's a ton of fun. Uh we have all these levels public and you can play them yourself you can follow us as makers and and go through our entire workshop history one level at a time just seeing us improve it's quite amazing we don't have a lot of time for that so we got to move on to the next lesson things get a lot more interesting from here because as you can see from here everything gets crazy right now that we know how to set blocks down we just went to town and every single layer from the base coins enemies power-ups uh we did something really interesting as a workshop and i kind of want to show you myself so hang tight i clap all right, lesson number three. Lesson number three is all about coins. And lesson number two, we learned how to create structures and spaces that are fun for Mario to move through. Part of the depth of Mario platforming gameplay comes from the variety of speeds, angles, and arcs Mario can successfully use to navigate the course. Now, the problem is when a course has options, players often skip or miss them. When a course restricts the player's options, the flexible depth is reduced. Design-wise, we need to consider an element that floats somewhere in between the mandatory ground traversal and the optional pathing possibilities. There's a pun in there. I hope you guys all caught it. Floating, coins, whatever. So, assignment number two, we challenged ourselves to make bonus rooms. Now, bonus rooms are something that's relatively rare in games. Why? I don't know. Because most games don't have coins and most games don't have fun for fun's sake uh, elements. So what we did... In true Donkey Kong style, Sonic style, Mario style, uh, we created bonus rooms. We got ourselves a, f a fixed camera view uh, locked into a room. Let me see if I can do that. 
we got a fixed view locked into a room, and we decided to make every single room a different style of bonus room. We decided to do this as a community. So we came up with something called the bingo board. Now, so when we say design space, this is a perfect example of what we mean. Lots of possibilities are possible when you're designing a game, but the best way to organize it is plenty of ways. But a good way to go about it is by organizing things. And for coins, when we're talking about the different kinds of coins, we put all those coins uh, at the top. We got floating regular coins and three coins placed directly on the outside of blocks. We have multiple coin blocks. We have coins out of reach of Mario. We have pink coins and big coins. and But we have on the left side all the things that Mario can do to get the coins, right? So you're matching the type of coin with a type of execution. Coin, execution, made the entire chart out and tried to fill up every single square as a community. So the bingo board was an incredible amount of fun. We got to see, uh, we have to throw our names into the chart. You basically claim a type of bonus room that you were going to make. You make it and then you claim another spot and you try to make roughly four to eight different rooms and submit it. And then we would take pictures of it and put it Beautifully in this design space, right? Uh, not only are all these different rooms present in our levels, but you can see the smattering of different uh, styles across the different ones, right? Some people did Super Mario Bros. 3. Some people did the original. Some people did 3D World. Some people did Mario World. Very good. And we streamed the whole thing. So right here on our streams, over here, we have multiple people playing through the bonus remotes right now. We're going to talk a little bit about their design. Any memories? What did we learn from from playing bonus mode or making bonus rooms? One of the things that was interesting to me about making bonus rooms was realizing how many interesting challenges you could, uh, the, the variety of challenges you could come up with just with using coins. You have your basic, lay, basic layout and your coins and you can still make an interesting challenge without ever putting the player in danger. Um, we, I think for mine, I had a coin clear condition, so that encouraged you to get the coins. So, but they were still fairly optional. Like you, could, you only had to get... There were a lot of coins available, but then just trying to get as many coins as you can. It's just, just fun. Bonus rooms are fun. They're just sort of fun <laughs> for fun's sake. You get, you get your fun, shiny collectibles, but you can... But while while they while coins can seem kind of pointless, like you don't really need all these coins, but you can still create a lot of gameplay with without going past basic layout and coins, which I thought was interesting. Mm. Very cool. We got Jeff playing one of his levels yeah, so, uh, on the bottom left, and we have Tony playing on the bottom right. Go ahead, Jeff. Yes. Yeah, so when when I made these bonus rooms, one of one of the things I remember is I was. I was pretty adamant about still trying to include enemies in, in some way. <laughs> but one, one, of our, one of our requirements was that they still couldn't hurt you. So uh, with that restriction, I discovered that in uh, at least the Mario Maker engine, if you have a wiggler in between two blocks like this on two blocks, you can't get in between it so you'll always just bounce on it in a unique way instead of ever being hurt by it so in this level there's a little bit of contrast between the wigglers that give you a small bounce and these bumpers that can give you a much larger bounce i'll chime in too um for some of the levels um well, the specific rooms for each level, I noticed that there's been like some suspension uh, that happens between the different uh, bonus rooms. Like you can collect a power up in one room, and then that's something that might be useful in future rooms. Which I think maybe the first instance that we've had that since the workshops are because we had we haven't had like sectioned off challenges like this until then, and. Uh, just reflecting back on it, I noticed around that time I have a tendency to uh, construct very like symmetrical or like pattern like <laughs> formations with the blocks. Kind of joked around here, uh, making up a term for me doing that, but whether <laughs> I intended to or not, it was just something I naturally did. 
cool. uh, when making the formations. I, one of the bonus rooms, for example, was just like a fully patterned out room full of blocks, but some of the blocks are missing. And if you figured out uh, the lack of symmetry between one side of the room versus the other, you could find like a, a bonus one up. Oh, that that same thing is in this course, but with a it gives you a mushroom. Oh, nice. If you if you fill in the missing block, yeah. <laughs> so si- similar gameplay idea there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So definitely everything that you guys said. Uh, one thing that I love about bonus rooms, again, uh, the rule is you can't be hurt in a bonus room. That's kind of like a, a well understood room. It should just be all positives and or it kicks you out of the room and you don't really have any consequences so uh, there's no enemies in here and like jeff said he put enemies in a way that basically turned them into level elements right they can't hurt you that's great all kinds of subtle challenges that they're making all kinds of ways to link the different ideas from one room to the other uh having a coin clear condition really makes things interesting and so on and so forth right bonus rooms let's to go that's like three puns come on people that's, that's, Bonus rooms to go, as in rooms to go, the store, and then I put let's to go because Mario, come on, guys. Come on. I'm going to end the stream right now. (laughs) (laughs) And and Jeff, go ahead and complete your level and try to find Marcus's bonus room uh, or Akamarik's. Akmars has a really cool interview. Oh, sure. We'll save his for later. Hmm. Yeah, but yeah, definitely. One thing that's really cool to think about is before with blocks only, we were just shoving stuff into space, but now we're kind of locked into these boxes. But because we had a specific idea going into each box, like I want the coins to be this, and I want the player to do that, I want the player to do that, I want the coins to do this. Each room is a distinct and separate gameplay idea, right? You see it, and in a flash, you're like, ah, this is about doing whatever weird thing that you see here on the screen. You may not have a word for it, but you definitely know, one, if you've ever seen it before, and two, if it looks like fun, right? Because obviously you can skip a lot of these. And it's up, and even it's really interesting in those confines because a lot of people, when they make courses, they tend to go overboard on the difficulty. And by a lot of people, <laughs> I mean a lot of people, and a lot of people do. So when the level can't hurt you, and it's all fun for uh, fun's sake... You're, you can kind of feel yourself trying to add complexity, trying to add uh, challenge, but you do so in a way that doesn't hurt the player, and the whole thing ends up being more fun, like the whole thing, right? So that's just kind of helping us one by one rein in our expectations, uh, build by layers, uh, design by principles, and go from there. Uh, but yeah, go <laughs> ahead. Anyone else have anything to share? I will say um, it was much easier to build bonus room levels uh, basically, to have an idea and then build it, uh, because, oh, because it wasn't linked to the rest of the level. Because Mario levels are continuous, so each part links to another part, and that's how I usually think about Mario levels. But then partitioning them into rooms basically allowed my brick structure to facilitate my ideas. So if you look at my bonus room levels, they have a bunch of funky geometry, just like my blocks only level. Hey so Jeff, we, can you go ahead and find Marcus's? You're pretty close. All right, here we go. Bonus Bonanza. Cool. So go ahead, Marcus. Keep talking. Oh, that was my... Want me to say it again? Maybe, yeah. Maybe repeat it again. You can even point to the stuff he's actually showing you now. So, I mean, you can obviously see this is not a normal Mario brick layout. I basically made all this to facilitate the cool donut drop trick. So there's probably a Mario uh, brick layout that would look natural and allow that, but I don't know it. So just in designing my idea, I didn't worry about it. Oh. Ah! Whoops. <laughs> so this is one I've never gotten, this one right here, uh, that Jeff is doing. I've never gotten those coins in that upper area. I'm bad. Oh, in- no, Jeff. Just, just, <laughs> just, you got to get it, <laughs> I would find it interesting. This is the same I was thinking of going for the point. jump from the right, but let me, let me try the donut. Oh. It's... Sh- and now that I think about it, that shouldn't be hard, and I keep jumping right. way too early. You're right, Mark. Yeah. You're yeah. right. I, I yeah. hesitated between just walking off and doing the jump. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's cool that you can see here some of the bonus rooms have Oh, that was a bit lucky. Yeah. Wow, I've never seen that before. That was lucky. What the heck? 
Uh, yeah, so the, just because it's a bonus room, just because you can't be hurt, just because whatever, whatever, uh, there's consequences, right? Sometimes you're like, ah, and you have to go back and play it again. Sometimes you're not like me and scream uh, at 9.44 p.m. It's completely up to you. So, yeah, I highly encourage you guys to play these levels for yourself. And, like, let let us know. Give some feedback. We got Twitters. We got Discords. We got things for you to let these creators know exactly what you think of their levels. It's more fun than you expected. Let them up. Uh, so that's the kind of feedback that we would give each other live. But because now the Mario Maker Workshop's over and we're doing this crash course, I'm giving you little cool opportunities to kind of be a part of that magic. Because this is obviously magic. This looks like magic. So let's go back to the lesson hub and do our second to the last lesson. The next lesson in the Mario Maker Workshop and the next lesson for us, Crazy Crash Course, is a one of enemies, right? Enemy complexity. Now, this is where things get crazy, so let's take it one step at a time. In lesson three, the workshop created a wide variety of gameplay ideas by making bonus rooms. Despite excluding all elements that could hurt Mario, the rooms were quite challenging. This week, we set aside the coins, so like, no coins, no coins, and just focusing on enemies. <clears throat> So check out this really interesting quote by Satoru Iwata. And it, he said, if you play the game for the first time with no prior knowledge, you're going to run into the first Goomba and lose a turn. So even though the Goomba seems like the easiest enemy in gaming, straightforward as straightforward can be, you're going to die, right? And it's all about knowing things. It's all about putting the scene and the complexity and the challenge together. And even something as simple as a Goomba, when used properly, can be deadly. Okay, remember that. So, again, instead of making bonus rooms, we took the same room-by-room room structure and we filled them with enemies. And this is called the enemy gauntlet. Because apparently when you shove a bunch of enemies in a room and make people go through one by one, it's difficult. And it's worthy of the name gauntlet. Uh, again, this time we nearly filled out the entire bingo board, the enemy bingo board. And you can see this beautiful, beautiful map, right? Again, across the top, we have Goomba class, Shell class, enemy from wheel one, enemies from wheel two, enemies from wheel three, four, four with bosses, whatever. Water enemies. I should have just said water enemies instead of whatever. It's right there at the end. I just gave up. And then on the left side, we have how you deal with enemies. Because again, just like your coins, what they are and how you deal with them is a really good way to understand all the possibilities. You can avoid them, defeat them, use them against other enemies, use enemies to progress or unlock a path. Enemies needed to maneuver, like jumping off of something. Enemies to protect or keep from dying. Normal and versus big enemies. Normal and winged enemies with parachutes or whatever. Stacked or en masse enemies. And you can use a harmful gizmo for the last one, right? Even more cells to take on. Workshop did a great job. Fantastic. Look at that. But the cool part about this enemy gauntlet this time is... Oh, so let me read this quote. Shigeru Miyamoto said... This gave us a real headache. We needed some help to make sure the player understood. We have to teach the player in a natural way, right? So they were playtesting Mario. People were really getting frustrated. They were getting confused, blah, blah, blah. He, did, he realized that informing the player about what the challenge is, how the enemies work, is actually very important for them to, one, have fun, and two, even understand what's going on in the first place, right? So even though we're building challenge, we always have to remember what we're communicating. And we started the first three lessons of the Mario Maker Workshop communicating things very clearly under constraints and con confines. That's not even a word. Under constraints. And now we're thinking about opening it up a little bit more. But this is a really cool chart. Hmm. When you start adding enemies, other elements to the level, you have much, much wider range of gameplay possibilities. And as you can see here, the chart spans uh, from a very linear approach on the top to varied stat strats on the bottom. Does it work? You have puzzly levels on the left. You have platformery levels on the right. And you can see, as I roughly mapped out all of our uh, single room enemy gauntlet challenge possibilities, our bingo entries, if you will, that we trended towards platformers and we also trend somewhere in the linear and nonlinear space, right? Not a lot of people make a lot of puzzles. Very cool. Something to keep in mind. But let's go, streamers. Everyone on stream, pick up some enemy gauntlet levels and show us what you got. I'm going to go ahead and switch my view to you. So, yeah, any memories, any stories, any anecdotes, any whatever. Uh, Tony, if, he, if you got one to share, I know you in particular had some uh, enemies 
Wow, so profound. You had some enemies. Um, <laughs> if you wanted to share something, Tony, you haven't spoken yet, so I'm giving you an opportunity. You kind of remember this level. I feel like I don't know who said it. Like they said, like uh, the layout here was like the way I did my enemies. They weren't as threatening as they could be, and that okay. was uh, the way I approached my uh, my design here with uh, with the enemies. I I tried. I don't think I ever, I tried to like go full Kaizo, so to speak. You know, try to go overboard with the the difficulty design. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think earlier I did like a. I think my second level I made was like a. Remember that bullet bill level? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to do that again. I don't like low clear clear rates. I like my clear rates high. So I think I try to like not go crazy yeah, with yeah. how I put out my enemies. <laughs> yeah, I, re- <laughs> I remember some of your enemies like this in the dry shell room. Just really simple, straightforward. A couple of bumps, a couple of bumps. Still fun, right? This yeah, honestly. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I, honestly, I, honestly, I really like to- uh, your your general use of enemies, Tony, because I think a lot of Mario makers tend to overdo it as far as number of enemies and the like, cranking up the difficulty too high. I like I like how simple your layouts and your enemy placements tend to be, because you can you can still do lots of, have lots of fun, interesting setups that way. Uh, Jeff's playing one of his most deadly rooms. Man, Jeff, why? <laughs> why you do this to us, Jeff? <laughs> Look yes, at this the, the, the multi-point... I oh, will say, as a ahead, Marcus, general commentary about what happened, about what happened when we started adding enemies, uh, the Trail Brothers' madness showed through. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's courses and my courses are just nonsense. <laughs> 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 like, I tried so hard... I, you can look at you can look at the the graph the um, platformer versus mm, puzzle. Yeah. strict and uh, you know, puzzle and then nonlinear versus linear. I have the most bottom left course, which is a <laughs> puzzly nonlinear, and that was just nonsense. <laughs> I play I play the level now knowing what to do, and I know all the parts. It's just so hard. I play so hard to be clever, and when you have enemies and you're trying to be clever, you die a lot. You're like, this is not fun. <laughs> this is not fun. <laughs> Lesson number five of the Mario Maker Workshop Crash Course. It's the final one we're going to cover today. Uh, keep in mind that the actual Mario Maker Workshop, it took us about six or seven weeks to get even to this point, right? Uh, and the, the work was throughout the week, right? People submitting levels, giving feedback, uh, sharing ideas, learning a lot about Mario, having a ton of fun. And this was even before they added online play with friends. So we were just doing it like this, right? Just like right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so lesson number five is all about power-ups here we go <laughs> everyone who has played mario platformers is familiar with power-ups players seek them and hold on to them as long as possible to increase their chances of success and though each may only augment mario's ability a little each power-up is more complex than the average enemy right we're increasing in complexity it's why we're ending on something big so here's a quote quote from Yoshiaki Koizumi I'll start from the beginning we start thinking about power ups in terms of functionality the B suit and the boost suit added the ability to temporarily escape the laws of gravity through flotation so so they're thinking like how does this thing change the way that the world works that Mario works and what Mario can do power ups functional change everything else dynamically changes after that here we go Power-ups by their nature are designed to give the player power. With this power, the player can undermine the challenges in a course to make things easier. If a power-up doesn't make things easier, it's not power. Right? Power-ups <laughs> actually have to make the game easier and something you just got to embrace, right? It makes games fun. Mario's already proven that it makes games more fun. Let's take a look. Two, your mini course should feature in order a unique way of obtaining the power-up, a unique way that the power-up allows movement to happen, a unique way for your power-up to create offensive power against enemies, a unique way to defend using the power-up, uh, any other weird unique quirks for the power-up, or uh, un- unique moves and then unique properties, right? So you, you make a level, and you have to get to the end of the level as small Mario, and then they get to go through the same exact course, 
as the powered up Mario so players can directly compare the two experiences. So we have, cool. Go ahead, Jeff, start playing. All right, this is the Piranha Plant level, aptly named because there are Piranha Plants. Uh, <laughs> so we're doing, we're going to do one pass through the course and then we'll be blocked off by these on off blocks which get toggled by a switch. So it's a very short course just demonstrating the assignment. So we did our first pass through the course. We can hit this switch here. And we have a block that gives us the power up. <laughs> I will have to hit the block a second time to actually design. <laughs> Oops. Do that how, to, do that how, to, how I designed it. Maybe not. <laughs> cool. Maybe the right. maybe the, maybe not the most intuitive block placement, but there we have it. We just we were able to breeze right through once we received the power up. I was going to say the strength of the power up laps. I think had a lot to do with the strength of the original power up used. The mushroom being the number one, like the first, best only <laughs> power up in the Mario series. <laughs> so a lot of the examples you see here are drawn from the classic examples you'll see in normal in the normal games. Yeah, that was from Mario World right there. That duck in the hole as a huge balloon yeah. comes by. Yeah. No. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. Oh, did I? I just spoiled that. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Hey, nice. <laughs> hmm. Aha. No, you go this ahead. is the this is the unique. This obtaining. is this is Richard's obtaining, unique yeah. method of obtaining the power up. Yep. Using the mushrooms properties of. Bonk just moving, team. just moving, bonk ability and <laughs> bonk, ability. bonk ability and just <laughs> its own movement left to right. Yeah. As it moves off the blocks. So now we can get all the coins. Hooray. Ooh, oh, a one up. Hey, hey. Secret. Hey. <laughs> secret. Jeff got some good natural Mario sense. Oh, so close. Now that's the only thing I can't find a, a analog to in a normal Mario game. Yeah, punching a thing and getting out of the way while I crush is something. Yeah. Oh, you can do it! <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot harder than it looks. Yeah, you, you have to hit the head. The portal now. He's, he's just ahead now. Oh. Wait. Oh, well, I missed, Ooh, I missed the opportunity yeah. of Got demonstrating it. the power up, but we can ground pound and move past the bullet bill faster. And I actually don't know what to do here, so. <laughs> But we could, oh, <laughs> we, we could use we could use invisibility frames to get that fifty coin. You actually can't. Oh, you no. You, you can't have wall to jump. Tell Mario to get that coin. You can't wall jump off the spikes. You, you won't go high enough. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting showing the differences. So I will say, like my star oh, yeah. power flap. Um. The kind of advantages you get from the star, one, the obvious ones are invincibility and uh, infinite killing power. And then, uh, that has a tendency to destroy level design. So it's kind of hard to go, <laughs> I'm going to show you I'm a master level designer. I have the star power up. But the really yeah. only thing I could really stress was that uh, increased speed gives you increased horizontal distance. Uh, and that's what I really try to focus on. So I really had to turn away the fat. And I really only had one trick for the entire lap, where Richard's mushroom one has four, five, yeah, one, one each. Get down that hole! Get down that hole! Please, <laughs> Jeff, just crouch in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying okay, there was something you could do with the bullet bills. <laughs> oh yeah, there's absolutely nothing you can do. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 see, okay, you, you now you're tall enough to wall jump safely. Hey, but what I was saying was you could, you could, you could, you, you could damage yourself no. and use invincibility. Get down, Jeff! Get down, Jeff! Get down, Jeff! 
Now, <laughs> you see, if you wall jump with your face, that's the only way Mario can get up there. Hey, there you go. Get down, Jeff! Yeah. Get down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, There's go, a little go bit back. of stream delay, so I'm, I'm already in the hole and you guys are telling me to get down. <laughs> <laughs> Me. All right, so we so now we're able to uh, get both maximum get, coins. Try it. Oh, I was able to get the ten coin before, but yes, now we're now I can. Oh, I'm tall Mario, and I can get my ten coins. We're high enough. We're tall enough. And otherwise, we'll them. otherwise we'll get nine coins. That's how not, Mario okay. Brothers tuned it. And only as big Mario can you butt stomp and get all the coins. Oh, okay, that's how it works. Yep. I I yep. should know this. From how long <laughs> I've played this game. Too much play. I'm like, yeah. sometimes I'm. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now we can. Yeah. Now we can easily grab the. Yeah. The flag top. top yeah. Top so we'll flagpole. finish off the course. There we go. Top of the flagpole. Cool. So that has been mm-hmm. our, our look at the first five major lessons from the Mario Maker Workshop. This covers the core of Mario's design. It covers why Mario is unique. Uh, covers how to draw out that uniqueness and it covers that fun all the way from the foundation is really important when building games. All right, this is Jeff. See you guys later. Akamarak, you're next. Hey, this is this is Mark. Uh, this is Chris Rack. Bye. <laughs> Marcus, you're or uh, Marcus, you're up next. I want to read you. Marcus mind. here. See you later. I'm Hayden. Bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> This is Fire Cakes, and you're watching Design Oriented. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. So thanks for joining us, team, uh, for reviving the glory days of Mario Maker Workshop. And.